Welcome to the next tutorial. We're going to get right into it with um, all sorts of mechanics now. So we're going to need a trigger, we're going to need um, a score manager, and all sorts of stuff. So right now I still have my note clones in. I didn't do the thing off camera yet, I just kind of started right after I left off. And we're going to go right into what we were doing last. So I'm actually going to take all these notes that I've created, um, and I'm going to delete them because I'm going to redo that off camera. I mean, I gave you guys a good idea of how to do this. But um, I'm just going to work on other mechanics now because we got to get into this, you know. We're going to create a new thing, and we're going to call it our um, game, oops, our game manager. Ah, there we go. We're going to put out the origin, and our game manager is basically going to decide if you missed a note, what to do, how to manage um, when you do get a note, and so on. So we're going to put this down here. We're going to set it as a trigger. We're going to extend its X to be very long. And the whole point of this is to be a kill zone for any notes that go off the screen that you miss. So right off the bat, we're going to make our game manager. And this probably will be one of the bigger scripts. It even got a little gear because Unity does that if you name something game manager. Let's open her up. There we go. Okay, so... We're going to need a void on trigger, enter 2D. And right off the bat, anything that we need a collider 2D called coal. So right off the bat, anything that enters your thing should be destroyed. So destroy um, object. Anything at all. No exceptions. If anything touches this, it dies, basically. And this will keep our notes managed. I don't feel like sitting through the entire song, so I'm going to pull some notes down here. Bring a note down, we look at our scene, it touches the kill zone, and it's gone. Um, notes managed. Now at the same time, if something hit it, we can assume that our streak was ended. So this is why we're going to need our score manager here. I mean, even if you miss a note on the instant, it should decide your streak has ended. So I might even change it instead of making the kill zone be a part of it, just make it be over here and decide if your streak has ended. That's what I'm going to do, actually. Let's take our game manager and we're going to move it up just below here. We don't want to destroy our notes, but we want to know that a note has entered it, meaning that um, we have killed our streak. And it's got to be a little bit lower than it, like about here, because there has to be no more region for the note to be able to be clicked. Um, so that looks about right. And if something hits this region, then it's going to destroy your streak. We don't want to kill them yet. We'll make a different object have that. Maybe a different trigger at the bottom. So for now that works. Um, so we need to make it so our activators here don't just add a score here. They need to get the score. So to get score, we're going to need to go through our game manager. And to go through our game manager, it's, it's a whole thing. So we're going to call a function called get score. And get score is going to decide based on our um, multiplier, our streak, and our, our multiplier is equal to zero by default, or one by default, our streak is equal to zero by default. So every time, um, uh, public void get store. And our score is just going to, and we actually want to make it an int, actually, a public and to get score. And our score is going to be equal to our um, point worth, which would be 100. So we're going to return 100 times our um, multiplier. Easy as that. So when we get our score now, it will return 100 times our multiplier. And we can't just um, call get score. We actually have to get the game object that score is from. So in our start, we're going to find it. We're going to call it public. Um, actually, we're just going to call it game object uh, GM for game manager. Oops, GM for game manager. And in our start, we're going to say that GM is equal to get component. I mean, um, game object dot find. And we're going to look for the name called game manager. And that's that's our game manager, GM. So 
gm.getComponent uh, game manager dot get score. And that will get our score from our game manager. So it's going to get the current score and add that to our proper score. If we play the game again, it's just going to be the same thing. Unless we made our multiplier too, we should get um, 200 points now for every note that passes through. So we're at 2040 or 20,400. We hit a note and we're getting 200 per note now. That was a lot of notes. Okay, that's easy, right? We have our multiplier, but we need to make our multiplier add up with every maybe five or six notes. So whenever we hit a note or whenever we get score, let's make it more um, organized actually. So whenever we add score, we can assume we hit a note and we're gonna call a different function called um, public void um, add streak. So every time we add streak, logically we hit a note, right? So in our, um, in our, right over here, okay, so this decides that we hit an active note, right? It destroys the note, add score, active equals false. So what we're going to do now is um, add, no, 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 we're going to call our gm.get component, but we're going to call the, um, the add streak instead now. So now we're just going to add streak. And add streak, very simply, we'll take our streak and add it up. Go to our game manager, our streak will add up by one every time we add streak. And now we want to say if our streak, actually, we just want to say that our multiplier is equal to um, our streak. No, 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 no. We'll say if our streak is. Um, greater than maybe every, I'm gonna look up for guitar here how many times it takes, how many streaks per multiplier. I feel like it's 10 notes, like if you hit 10 notes in a row, go up. I actually don't know though. I guess we'll just make it our own, I can't find it anywhere. I have a feeling it's 10 though, so we'll make it be 10, or just for this game's sake, we'll make it be 6. So if our streak is greater than, um, and we can use a mod here, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, we can do if it's greater than uh, 24, for example, if it's equal, greater than or equal to 24, then we have a 4 streak, right? And if it's greater than or equal to um, 18, then we have a 3 streak, greater than or equal to 12, we have a 2 streak or so on. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna make it be about eight. So if we have a greater than or equal to eight, then it would be um, a zero streak. And I can even use a mod here. This is why I'm having trouble. So we're gonna take the mod actually of something. So our multiplier is gonna be equal to um, our streak mod mod um, I guess. But the integer form of it. Mod, mod's not gonna work here. We're gonna do streak divided by eight, pass it to an int plus one. But then we don't want it to keep increasing. That's the only problem. We do have to use if statements here. That formula would just keep it from keep it increasing. So we're just gonna say um, if our streak is greater than or equal to, um, we'll do multiples of eight, so it'll be eight, 16, and 24, right? So if it's greater than or equal to um, eight, it would be a two times, 16 would be a, so if it's greater than or equal to 24, then um, our streak, our multiplier is equal to four. If our streak is greater than or equal to 16, multiplier, is equal to a three. If our streak is greater than or equal to eight, that's on eight. Eight multiplier is equal to two. Otherwise, our multiplier is equal to one. And these all have to be else ifs, by the way. I don't know why I did ifs there. 
There you go. And that will handle our multiplier decently. So our streak goes up, and then boom. We also need a public void um, reset streak, and that's going to be if we miss a note, we reset our streak. And that's going to set streak equal to zero and multiplier equal to one. And that will reset our streak effectively. So we have our reset streak function implemented now. I have to put a semicolon here. Um, so whenever we miss a note, which is called on trigger exit of a note, I guess. So on trigger exit, that means that we missed a note also. So it's no longer active. And our streak is going to get reset. Basically, here we missed a note. Here we hit a note. And that's really all there is to it. So we could try it out now. And it will work. But at the same time, um, we won't be able to tell it's working, really. Because there's no display. We also need to reset our streak if we hit a note and there's nothing there. And there's no real way to tell it's working, but it is working. Um, I have to display the multiplier, I guess. And to do that, we can just make it so every time we do this, we reset, we set our multipliers, player pref, and so on. So we'll do that, and then we'll finish up the video and go on to the next part. I don't want to make this too long. But before I do that, I also want to make it so it resets your streak. When you hit down a note, and you're not active. So So if you get key down and you're not active, then we're going to reset our streak. So we're resetting our streak if we get our key down and we're not active. And that will that will effectively reset our streak. So let's take our game manager and every time we add streak our reset streak and like change our multiplier we want to update our streak and multiplier so we're going to make a function called um public void we're going to call a void um update update i don't know gy i guess and that's just going to take our player prefs and set the end for um streak Streak, and it's going to take our player press and set the end for um, our multiplier. I'll call it mult to um, multiplier. There we go. So now, whenever we do this, we're going to call update GUI. So every time we affect our streak or multiplier, we want to update our GUI, basically. And now we have to go to our GUI and actually make something to display it. So we'll go to our canvas here. Press F to view it. Um, we'll take this text here, lower it a little bit, make it maybe like a cream color. Make it say like four times, because that's really what it is going to be. Change this to molt. And that will display our multiplier. We'll just make it be a number, though. It can only be um, four through one, is, no, one through four, my bad. Now we're going to make um, remove this component. We're just going to make it be a times. So it always says times, right? There you go. We have four times there. And then when we play the game, it um, starts off as zero times. Until we press a button, it will update it. Let's see if we can get a multiplier. And we're at two times there, as you saw. We can also display our streak now, maybe below our multiplier. And just move that over a bit. We have our multiplier. Now we can display our streak, our note streak down here. I'll make an even darker color. And all we have to do is type in streak and we'll display our streak. Our note streak, we have a one times multiplier. Our note streak is zero. And here we go. Oh shit. And it works, it works great. We have a streak, I'm just very bad, and my song isn't easy. Because <laughs> I have that stupid part in the middle. But if I had a bunch of notes in a, in a row, it would work very good. We get, uh, we get our streak going up now, that's pretty cool. 
We have streak, we have multipliers, we have score, which is affected by our streak and multiplier. Um, we really just need a losing meter, and we're good. You can make whatever song you want. So, um, between this and the next video, I'm going to try and fix my notes so it actually um, displays them properly, because that's bothering me a lot. The notes aren't quite accurate to the song. So, tune in next time, and I'll have that done. And then we'll make, so you can lose, we'll make high scores. Then you guys can make your own music games and just enjoy yourself. So, thanks for watching.